Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Uh, the lecture today uh, will be dealing with something that we all use all the time, names. And the question becomes, what's in a name and how do we connect that with uh, Judaism and spirituality as well? The, um, the Gemara says, or Mayor says that, more in Yuma, that when a parent gives a name, we think it's cutesy and uh, there are different ways and different reasons that we give names. But Mayer says when a parent gives a name, it has a, basically a, a bit of what we call Ruach HaKodesh, it's prophecy. And that name has a meaning to it. Um, we can trace names all the way back. It talks about the person, but uh, it says when Adam was created, first man, that um, he asked him to name all the animals. The angels are not able to do that that he was able to name them because he could see the essence of who they were. And that was what their names were. Also naming his wife Chava as the mother of all, of all beings. Now, Jewish names express hope, salvation, mercy, and godliness. Many were often based on life experiences, just as we know that uh, Yehuda, the fourth son of Leah, was called uh, Yehuda's praise of God. She thought she'd only have three, each one of the mothers. When she had the fourth one, she praised God, and we carry that same name. As a sense of being a Jew and the concept of being of thanking. And within the name Yehuda is the name of God, the mercy. Also Moshe, again, a bit of Hakar Satov, of gratitude that Moshe had ten names. Um, and the name that we know him as, Moshe, means drawn out of the water, which is what Basia, the daughter of Paro, did. So again, some names many times dealt with events. There um, is an Ashkenazi, old Jewish belief, that the name, the person's name is the essence of his being. Um, basically, the name is a person's soul. Uh, so that for giving a relative, a child, a relative's name, in a sense, you're also giving that child the, that person's soul. Uh, we have a tradition. I know I have two names. Um, I'm named after my grandfather, who died in the Holocaust as a young man, and therefore I was given the name of an Altazade of an old grandfather who lived to a ripe old age. So many times that's done to be given two names so that you counteract one with the other and take the, melt the two together. Um, now, so the Ashkenazim do not give uh, names to their children of living relatives. There is a fear that actually it might shorten their, the older person's life. It's interesting, Rabbi Huda Chosid actually forbade marrying a person who has the same name as your mother or father. Um, that might lead to an embarrassing situation when you call out your wife's name and your mother or your father turned around, depending on what it would be. So it would be a lack of respect. And uh, so basically that's not done. Now Sephardim, interestingly enough, do name children after grandparents and even after themselves. They seem not to have the same concerns on what, it, uh, what happens with this. Now... What's interesting is that um, when we call a person up to the Torah, in fact, in olden times, last names didn't exist. That's really very secular. And people took on many times the name of their profession, Goldsmith, uh, Cohen is a Kohen, Siegel is a Levy. There were names that they, Poulter is a Baker. Uh, there were names that indicated what your profession was. So like if someone would be called Moshe the Butcher, you know, so they gave names that signified these things. Um, but in, in, in Judaism, basically a person is called by his father's name. But what's interesting is that when a person is, um, we say a blessing for a person, that a person should have a recovery from an illness or something, we actually use the mother's name. And the question is why the difference between the two? So there are two reasons given. Number one is that when you are asking for a refuah, for a, someone to be uh, cured of a sickness, what you want to do is hit a bullseye. You don't want to do it on a maybe. And so therefore, you want to make sure that you say the right name 
and we're sure who the mother is. The truth is that sometimes a person may think that his father is his father. It's not always the case. So that there can be a situation where the mother, for whatever reason, uh, has a child from someone else. And that child is really not the child of the father who thinks who is the father. But on the other hand, we have what is called a probability, called a chazaka, that children that are in a marriage are the ch children of that husband and wife. So based on that, it really makes no difference when you're called up to the Torah, as what we call Naliyah, coming up uh, to, be, to read from the Torah. In that situation, whether you are called by the right name or not even called by name at all, makes no difference. So since there's nothing lost by even making a mistake, uh, even people, if a, if a child is adopted and the father uh, is not alive or you don't know who the father is, uh, people do give the name of the adopted father even uh, for that child, and it's considered to be permissible. So that's really not a problem. And when it comes to the mother, again, there's also more rachamim. We believe there's more mercy and compassion connected. Um, we, we also have this as a tradition from Psalms. I think it's Psalm 117, where King David in Hallel says, Ani abducha ben amasech, I am the servant of your maidservant. And again, from there is an illusion, God, him, him asking God for help through his mother. So we have an illusion to that as well. Now, we also see in Torah, it's interesting, you really don't need a name. The only reason you need a name is for someone else. You know, you don't talk to yourself by your name, if you're talking to yourself. So you just say self. But the key becomes when someone else calls you, the name is necessary. So really, names are a social necessity. Um, and there's a, a tradition to name a boy at a circumcision and usually a girl at the first uh, Shabbos that comes up. And that's where the names are mentioned. Um, what's interesting, though, is that um, this idea of giving a name, uh, there's no real, tr there's real no, nothing really written about it, number one, in the Torah at a, at a circumcision or in the Talmud, in the Gemara. Uh, the earliest thing that we have a recollection of it is in the 12th century. And there's really no reason given as to why we did it at the Bris. Because the Torah mentions the sons of Yaakov, for example, being born and named right away. So it seemed to be that when a child was born, it was named immediately. And then somewhere along the line, I've heard uh, some rabbis say something about the Zohar mentioning it, according to Kabbalah. But we only have it noted in the 12th century and no reason is given. And then again, in the 16th century, when the Shulchan Aruch was made by Yosef Karo, then it's become commonplace that a name is given at a circumcision, and there's a whole liturgy that goes with it at the naming at the circumcision. Now, we also see this idea of a name, a person's name is connected to his mazel, to his luck, so to speak, to his destiny. And that's one of the reasons why we see that in the Torah very clearly. Avram. Abram and Sarai were not to have children. God added the hey to Avram's name to make it Avraham, Abraham, and to Sarah, Sarai's name to make it Sarah, Sarah. And then they did have uh, a son, Yitzchak. So by changing the name, it changed their destiny. And this is one of the reasons why we have a tradition of someone is deathly ill and seems to be a very difficult situation. What they'll do is change his name. And what they'll do many times is add the name Chaim, life, or Al to old, to the person's name to change his, the mix here and change his destiny. Now, there was a woman who told me that uh, she was actually a wild child, and uh, her parents added the name Menucha, uh, something that's quiet and relaxed, so to speak, to change her nature. And uh, first time I'd heard that, but it's interesting as well. Um, basically speaking, um, people have three names. There's a name your parents give you. Then there's the name that your friends call you, nickname. But then, more important than all, is the name you earn. And as uh, King Solomon says, that better a, a good name than good oil that oil will become putrid. A good name will even last after, the, after a person dies. 
and many times you'll meet someone who knew your grandfather, or even great grandfather, whatever, and they'll give you respect by virtue of the fact of who he was. And by carrying that name, you right away the doors open up, so to speak. Now it says in Pirkeiavos, uh, it says Reb Shimon says that there are three crowns. There's the crown of uh, the priesthood, there's the crown of kingship, and there's the crown of Torah. So these are the three towns, tra crowns that a person can have. And they also connect with the, uh, the, the table that was in the uh, temple and the menorah that was in the temple, and also the golden altar. Uh, and, uh, pardon me, the, the, table, the, the, uh, the table, the golden altar, and the ark. And then the fourth object that was in the temple was the menorah. And that didn't have a crown. And it says, but the, but the crown, it says, of a good name, a shame tov, olol gabehem, is greater than all of them. And that was signified by the menorah, that spiritual light. And that had no border, no crown around it. Because having a good name was without dimensions. And what's interesting is that it uses the Hebrew word, Ola al Gabeim, that is above all of them, which seems to mean that it is better. But what it also means is that in conjunction with all of these other elevated positions of kingship and of priesthood and of being a scholar, at the same time you still need a good name. That though you may be these things, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a good name. And a good name, again, is something that a person earns. So it's not just the name, it's what the name means when other people hear this. And this becomes very important. A person's reputation. A person's reputation is, is gold. They say of, uh, the Gemara talks about Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish was a great sage who initially had been a highway robber. And uh, there's a whole story about it which I'm not going to get into, but he he, he became, he turned over a new leaf, so to speak, and became one of the great sages of the of, of Torah. He's, in the, he's mentioned constantly in the Gemara, Reish Lakish and Rav Yochanan, whose uh, sister he married. And it said, there's a saying in the Gemara, it says if, if someone saw Reish Lakish talking to someone in the street, that you could loan him money without anything, that he was trustworthy. Because Reish Lakish, being a highwayman originally, he knew people. So therefore, if he associated with anyone, his good name, his reputation, would spread out on that person he was talking to, and people would even trust that person by virtue of it. So when you have a good name, again, people will take you on your word. People don't need to have documents signed. People don't uh, have to have collateral when they deal with you, because they know that a person's name is his bond, and that having that good name you know, it, it, it's an interesting thing. It takes takes a while to earn. It takes seconds to lose. That if a person makes one misstep, and in life it's amazing how you can do everything right, 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 and then you do one thing wrong and you lose it all. So a person has to be very careful. And that's what the Torah talks about, um, a person being honest, a person being truthful. A person should always know that what's at stake is always your reputation, your shame tov, your good name. And it's something that a person should cherish, like gold. And again, something that, will, that lives with a person and outlives a person after he dies. So what's in a name? What's in a name is everything that we are. That the essence of who a person is, it'll, you can sometimes say a person's name and look at a person's face, it'll make a person smile. You get a person angry, just by the name. So we see the power of what a name can do. And again, may we all earn that shame tov and be able to know that, that we have that gift to give to both our, not just for ourselves, but also our children and our grandchildren after us, the shame tov that we earn in the life that we lead by being a good person and, and serving God in the way he's supposed to, that he meant, means for us to do. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a good Shabbos.